Scientists suspect contaminated water spilling into the Gulf from Lake Okeechobee is intensifying the red tide crisis, choking Florida's coastline. Now, for the first time, researchers are working to pinpoint exactly what is fueling the algae bloom. ABC Action News reporter Michael Paluska joining them as they search for clues. Horrific images littering Florida's beaches, sea turtles, manatees, dolphins, and hundreds of thousands of fish all dead. A battle on two fronts as blue-green algae from blooms on Lake Okeechobee stain our rivers and canals green, and a completely different toxin turning our coasts a rust red. So it's, it's a perfect storm of a, a nightmare that just won't seem to go away. Boat Captain Chris Whitman, born and raised on the San Carlos Bay near Fort Myers, is now on a mission to save his local waterways. You can see some particulate of that blue-green algae. Ferrying scientists searching for the source of pollution killing marine life. Why is it more intense? Why is it more virulent? Why is it lasting longer? One of those scientists, John Cassani from the nonprofit Calusa Waterkeeper, is teaming up with Florida Gulf Coast University, searching for answers as things get even worse. Cassani says he's never seen the toxic algae from the lake, making it past barrier islands like Sanibel and into the Gulf of Mexico's red tide zone. To see fish that live to be 70 or 80 years old killed because of man's actions and mismanagement of habitat is criminal. Here's exactly what is happening. From Orlando South, all of the water flows into Lake Okeechobee. And for more than 50 years, chemicals found in fertilizer has been flowing into the lake from cattle ranches, orange groves, and septic tanks, to name just a few. Those chemicals mostly stay trapped in the lake, but several times a year, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers releases water from the lake into local rivers that lead to the Gulf and the Atlantic. It's not a sewer, um, but it's it's, you know, it's going that direction. Another boat, another scientist. Dr. Paul Gray with Audubon, Florida, on the polluted waterways of Lake Okeechobee. The lake is literally the butt of jokes. This political cartoon showing the Herbert Hoover dike surrounding it as a toilet seat. Add a little bit in there. Scientists already have ample proof that red tide, which began last October, continues to grow, feasting on fertilizers contaminating the water. The samples that these scientists took will be ready in a couple of months, but they want to know definitively that the water they sampled coming out of Lake Okeechobee compared to what's coming in from the red tide in the Gulf is causing this massive bloom. And on Lake Okeechobee, the toxins in the water are just as bad. It fertilizes the algae and they go wild. After rains from Hurricane Irma drenched the state, the lake filled with more than 2 million pounds of phosphorus, a chemical in fertilizer. That's nearly 10 times higher than the recommended limit. This is our biggest industry in the state is tourism. and. We're killing it. We're in the middle of Indian Prairie on Lake Okeechobee. Absolutely beautiful out here. We're two miles from open water. Back over there is where that blue-green algae is, that toxic bacteria. But amazingly, right here, the water is filtered. It's so pure you can drink it. And this is what scientists, all of this, are trying to protect. Projects are in the works decades from completion. And it's, it's going to take billions of dollars, and it's going to take decades. But unless we do it, this is going to be our life. And no, you know, no one wants to have toxic algae blooms. We're Florida. This is where you come to fish and where you come to swim and kayak and enjoy the water sports and go to the beach. In South Florida, Michael Paluska, ABC Action News.